Stevens coverage of women's college soccer. We are coming to you live from Stevens Stadium in Santa Clara, California. This is the 2021 NCAA Women's College Cup presented by Buick. And we have a matchup of two number one seeds in our first semifinal of the evening. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Florida State Seminoles. Taking a look at our semifinal bracket, it will be an all West Coast Conference affair in the second game. The two co-champions in that league, Santa Clara, the defending national champs, and BYU are here for the first time. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Hildreth alongside former U.S. National Team Captain Julie Foudy. And we've got quite a mix of teams in this field, Julie. You've got the teams like Florida State and Santa Clara who've been there, won that when it comes to national <laughs> championships. And then BYU Rutgers, a little more new to the party. Right. Whether you get the new or you get the veteran teams, it doesn't matter. You see a glimpse into what is the future of soccer. And if you're Rutgers, it's the future of domestic soccer, in particular New Jersey, 23 of the 28 coming from New Jersey. If you're Florida State, it's a different story. Nine different countries represented outside of the United States. Regardless, it is such a great glimpse into this talent. Well, let's give you some of those names you're going to want to keep an eye on in this first matchup. For Rutgers, Frankie Talia, Ferry, midfielder of the year in the Big Ten. Gabby Provenzano holding it down in the back. The fabulous freshman, Riley Tiernan, all playing so well for Coach Mike O'Neill. But this offense led by the Penn State transfer, Talia Ferry. And that was a gift, that transfer. Her fifth year, she decided she wanted to come back home because she brings experience. She brings goal scoring. She brings a tenacity that it's been such a gift for Rutgers having her back her senior year in her home state. All right, the names to know for Florida State, Jalen Howell, reigning Herman Trophy winner, Emily Madrill. She is the Defender of the Year in the ACC. Yuji Zhao, the first ever first team all ACC pick that has been that four times in her career for Florida State. Mark Korean, what a job he has done. And he got Beata Olsen to transfer in from Florida this year. Yeah, the Swedish youth national team player has brought such a lift to this front line for Florida State. 14 goals, and she can slash, she can finish. This is the one in the quarterfinal, the game winner against Michigan. She has given that team a real bounce in that number nine position. Getting the Seminoles back to the College Cup, but this is their first ever meeting against Rutgers. One of these teams trying to get through to the championship and play for that trophy. We will kick you off from Santa Clara when we come back. About ready to get you started here from Santa Clara with our first semifinal of the evening. Rutgers and Florida State facing off for the first time ever. Starting lineup, Julie, for Rutgers tonight. 4-3-3, All-American and Captain Gabby Provenzano leading that back line. Talia Fari uh, doing what she does best in midfield, creating chaos. But Amira Ali, so dangerous. All eyes on her, four-time All-American. And next to the electric, Riley Tiernan, the freshman we're all going to be watching as well. And for Florida State, they will also line up in a 4-3-3. Very experienced back line in midfield. It's actually the same starting seven in that midfield and back line as there was in the last College Cup. The new addition, of course, that front line is Olsen, as we talked about in the open. And only the second start for Ron Ewai up front. And Jalen Howell leading that midfield. She will be the general in there. The reigning collegiate player of the year. And Howell once again, a semi-finalist for that Herman Trophy. We've got a number of those amongst our four teams here tonight. Temperatures starting to dip just a little bit, but a beautiful evening to get this College Cup underway from Santa Clara. Florida State, who made it to the final last year, technically this past spring when that 2020 final was played in white. They'll try to connect with Jody Brown, one of their speediest players in that front line. Rutgers in scarlet, making just their second ever appearance in the College Cup, first since 2015. 12th appearance for Florida State, who've become absolute regulars in this Final Four of women's soccer. Clara Robbins has a way of stepping up in big games, two-time ACC tournament, most outstanding player for the Seminoles. As you'll see with so many teams, there's a lot of experience, a lot of redshirt seniors, fifth year, sometimes sixth, even a seventh year amongst some of our players here in Santa Clara as 
one of the silver linings of last year's season and the pandemic and the way it affected everything was all these play players being granted an extra year of eligibility. Yeah, and, and you see a lot of them getting master's degrees, continuing education. I mean, that is the silver lining in all of this. They got to continue and play soccer and play the game they love. Touch for Riley Tiernan, freshman of the year in the Big Ten. Leilani Nesbeck, number 13. Have it for a moment for Florida State now. Kirsten Pavlis go with the throw. These two teams pretty similar in terms of their offensive production on the season, both ranking in the top five in the country in terms of goals scored. 65 for Florida State, ranked third in the NCAA. Rutgers had 64 to rank fourth. All right, Julie, let's get your Saudis focus. For Florida State, what are you looking for? Well, one of the things which they're doing right now is they want to dictate that tempo. This is both of these teams actually possession-based teams, but it's going to be a chess match, and Florida State's going to want to win that in the possession game. And then the second key is for Florida State, they have such depth of their roster, so much talent, as we'll see, and they're going to use that to their advantage. That's going to be a huge key for them for today, especially for Mark Krikorian looking over this. He's, he's got a veteran roster as well. Now we talked about Yuji Zhao being one of those names to keep an eye on for Florida State. No mistake that she is not in the starting lineup. She's been coming off the bench for most of the season. More time first team all ACC pick, just some of that depth along with Jenna Nicewanger, a player we thought we might see in the starting lineup. A key change to get Ron Ewy in there. It's the second start of the season. She's up top, number seven in white. So we'll see what kind of an impact she might be able to have. Kiana Olson, number 30, making a run. Gets her foot to it. Nesbeth. When Howell gets forward, good things tend to happen for Florida State. Here's Pavlisko. Not a lot of breathing room for the Seminoles in this attacking third. Really good collective defending, but Robbins sticking with it, gets the cross. Over, far side, EY waiting for it, header off the crossbar, and now it's over. What an opportunity created by Florida State. Rutgers from the go, dropping into a low block, into a bunker, and Florida State able to navigate this. Robbins on that far side. What a good cross that is. Rutgers thinks they can get back. They think they get lucky off the bounce, and they do there off the crossbar. Oof. First corner kick of the match. Will this test this Rutgers defense? Keeper coming out for it. Megan McClellan got two hands to it, didn't clear it too far. Jody Brown. Corner kick, Florida State. Another corner kick coming for Florida State. How about your focus for Rutgers, Julie? One of the things, Mike. Coach Mike O'Neill talked about was keeping the ball and being able to dictate pace by doing that. So that is always a challenge against a Florida State team that is so good. That will be one of the, key, the keys, though. But then the biggest key, I think, is that transition game with uh, Amir and Tiernan, the freshman playing up top. There's some pace in those two, and they are going to try and catch him on the break. Seminoles will try it from the other side now. Cleared up the near post. How about another? So three corner kicks for the Seminoles in the opening minutes here. And Florida State has been dangerous. 15 set piece goals on the season, eight of them coming from corner kicks. Nesbeth, better looking ball this time. Headed by Howell, but right into the gloves of McClellan. You can see all the traffic in front of McClellan. Look at the numbers in front of her. Hard to even get to any ball. She can't get it, and that's exactly what Florida State wants to. Howell just doesn't get quite get enough on it. If she had put it even a yard to either side, that's a goal. There's Rutgers attack, trying to earn itself an opportunity to show why they've been so good. Talia Ferry, what a ball across! Christina Roque now gets her first touch. The sophomore goalkeeper out of Winter Garden, Florida. 
starter for the Seminoles all last season. Split time during the regular season this year with Mia Justice, a talented young keeper, actually just called in to the USU 20 camp that's coming up in December. But it has been Roque's goal to protect in the postseason. And there are some similarities in the way that both of these teams want to play, Julie. They want to have possession, be able to build. So far, Florida State's only been able to move it horizontally. Rutgers holding that line and not giving them a chance to move the ball up the field much. player to get a little forward momentum for the Seminoles. Nesbitt in the middle of the field. And I think that's what you're going to find with Florida State. They're going to have to, and there's Mike O'Neill, the coach, in his eighth season, 22nd year, actually, uh, with Rutgers. But for Florida State, looks like Rutgers is defending in a 4-2-4. When they drop into that block, the space is going to be on that flank. That's why you see Howell popping out, trying to find the ball out wide. But keeping it compact, that's the thing. If you let yourself get stretched by Florida State, they can just pick you apart. Florida State coming into this College Cup as the ACC tournament champs for the second year in a row. They were the nation's last remaining unbeaten, untied team. They won their first 14 matches and then really had a difficult test to the end of the regular season. The last three regular season games in ACC play, they did not get a win. Wound up finishing second to Virginia in the regular season in the Atlantic Coast Conference. much that rattles this Florida State team though they are used to being on the big stage seven players on this current roster who were a part of the team that won the 2018 NCAA championship you can hear Mark recording you and forward <laughs> forward and see and you see Talia Ferry's punching up so they're playing as a forefront to defend and saying, okay, if you want to play, you're going to have to go over us instead of through us. Yeah, this is an interesting tactic here for Florida State to try to figure out. And right now, you can tell Rutgers putting them in a spot they're not exactly comfortable with. And now Tiernan on the turnover. Riley Tiernan pauses, has time. Now takes the shot. And this is exactly where they want to be getting the ball, especially with Riley Tarrant in, in a 1v1 situation, running at players in the box. And how many times have we seen her rip that with her left foot? She pulls up, sees no one's going to step to me. Why not? And you can see what she's trying to do. She's just trying to bend it to that back far post. Just miss hits it a little bit. It's the right idea. But I'm surprised she didn't crank that first time, actually, as we've seen her do all season. And this is a player that's not af afraid to take on, not afraid to shoot. I mean, plays with such confidence as a, as a freshman. Just called into the U-20s as well. Yeah, her teammate saying of her when we spoke with him yesterday that in big games, she never cracks. You know, just a freshman, but you wouldn't know it by the way that she has played. And four goals, two assists in this NCAA tournament for Tiernan, leading the way offensively for Rutgers. And some success on this left side for Rutgers. Talia Ferry getting around, getting across in, almost connecting on the back post to Kroger. And there you see Tiernan as well on that left side. Rutgers earning the first ever number one seed in the NCAA tournament in program history. That comes after winning their first ever regular season Big Ten title. They wound up losing in the Big Ten championship game to Michigan, a game that 
they all told us helped fuel them, gave them a little extra fire, maybe the wake-up call they needed coming into the NCAA tournament. This is their 16th appearance in program history and getting back to this College Cup in rather dramatic fashion, by the way. They've had to come through double yep. overtime and penalty kick shootouts <laughs> yeah. in their last two rounds to get here. That's somewhat similar to Florida State's road last year where they had three straight matches where they went to shootouts and just kept advancing, getting all the way to the final before they wound up falling to Santa Clara in a shootout. Gabby Carl, member of the Canadian national team, won gold in Tokyo at the Olympics over the summer. Part of that international contingent you talked about for Florida State. Jody Brown has played for Jamaica internationally, gets it back from EY. Defended well. Rochelle getting it to Sarah Brocious, number 25 for Rutgers. There you go, that is the road that Rutgers has come through to get here. They've had to work hard, work a little extra as Pavlisko makes her way forward. All four starting defenders have scored for Florida State this season. Carl was a big part of that goal. Deanna Olsen scored golden goal in overtime against Michigan in the quarterfinal to get the Seminoles back to the College Cup. She and Howell, the two that linked up and eventually fed it to a wide open Olsen who did not miss for her 14th goal of the season. Good thing happens, good things happen when those outside backs can get forward, no question. And this back line for Florida State is just so experienced. 21 goals, 26 assists when you combine their career statistics. Mike O'Neill and his Scarlet Knights. Got through Bucknell, St. Louis, a couple of shutouts before they had those overtime games. And wound up taking down TCU and then Arkansas in shootouts. And wasn't it interesting they all told us that they never faltered in their belief that they were going to make it through when they got to those shootouts. You know, first one, they stepped up, they got it done, and then the second shootout, they certainly felt confident that they could get through, and they did. Yeah, Frankie Talley Ferry said, you know, we got to the first one, and I, I never even considered the possibility that this could be season ending. Yeah, never even crossed my mind. I was like, well, that's healthy. <laughs> How do you get there with everything? I think it helps when you have someone like Megan McClellan too in goal for you who uh, made three saves yeah. in the Arkansas game and then she steps up and takes one herself as well. Yeah, made one in both of the shootouts who mm -hmm. help in her own cause. And she said, yeah, I just look at it as my teammates have all worked so hard through regulation and two overtime periods. Now it's my turn to step up, no big deal. Our ABC College Football Conference Championship Weekend triple header coming your way tomorrow at noon Eastern. It's the Big 12 Championship game, number nine Baylor, number five Oklahoma State, then number 21 Houston, number four Cincinnati square off for the AAC title. And finally, 15th ranked Pittsburgh taking on 16th ranked Wake Forest in the ACC Championship game. What a full day of football on ABC and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Amir Ali somehow manages to stand up and come away with the ball. Tiernan. Ali now dances around, actually puts Jody Brown down on the ground, but plays it back. Provenzano, Big Ten Defender of the Year, fouled by Olsen. Donna named first team All-American this year for Rutgers. And I felt 
don't know if you felt this too, Julie. She just had a presence to her when yeah. we talked to them yesterday. She was one of those players where I thought, yeah, I'd, I'd follow her. <laughs> she can lead me. <laughs> lead me anywhere. I'm good. Telling yeah, us. there's a lot of character in that Rutgers team. I loved it. Karaoke they travel with. Yes. I mean, there's, there's a lot of fun to be had. It, it was suddenly I wanted to become a Jersey girl. <laughs> It was such a great combination of both, wasn't it? It was this mm -hmm. this drive that they knew how good they could be. They've had great fan support, got a good yeah. tailgate party going <laughs> I on here. I definitely want to be a Jersey girl and tailgate <laughs> with them too. So I know, they were a ton of fun. They had that drive, but they also had that, that sort of looseness about them yeah. where the, the moment wasn't phasing them, the stage wasn't phasing them, despite the fact that it's the first time for these players being on it. Brocious trying to do just enough to keep it alive. There's been a lot of contact. Ali has had barely any room to breathe. Four-time All-American for Rutgers is taken down. An all-female officiating crew, by the way. Samantha Martinez in the center of the crew this evening. Tiernan, can she get there? Ball does hold up for her. Madrill. The ACC Defender of the Year pushes her wide. And now Brown. Rutgers wins it right back. That's Brocious. Nesbitt has some pressure. And Sam Kroger on her back, so the Seminoles trying to move it to the other side. EY. Sophomore out of Tokyo, Japan. Madrill and Lauren Flynn, the two center backs for Florida State. So you heard Mark Corian earlier, Julie, saying get the ball forward. Well, now it's a little higher, but it's still the same game. How do they best find a way through? what Rutgers is presenting them defensively. Well, they're staying super compact, and what they're doing is Talia Ferry and Amir Ali are taking the center back. So those two are gonna push up on the center backs, and then they're dropping their wingers a little bit. So now it's a 2-4-4. Four, four. But they put numbers in midfield, and they've gotta be getting into the gap. Right now, Howell isn't getting into that gap in between that front line and that midfield. You just have to find these little pockets to connect. And then you can eventually, once they collapse on you, you can switch the Sorry, point. But there's not a midfield presence right now to break that first line of pressure. And so you're forced to go over and high, which is exactly what Rutgers wants to then do, because if you can take it off the ground and get Florida State playing a more direct game, it plays out of the hands of Florida State, I think, because they love to keep the ball as we know. Robbins, a good touch to set up EY. EY can't get it through. That scarlet wall defending, but Robbins helps to win it back. It just feels like the Florida State players have been smothered any time they do manage to get the ball here into their attacking third. And that's the beauty of, of keeping the game compact is you can get numbers around the ball. When the, the game starts to spread out, it becomes more of a one v one duel, and you do not want that, obviously, if you're Rutgers. You want to keep the game compact and then break when you can. And then, no, they're not going to be able to hold it, even though they are a possession-based te team. They're not going to be able to hold it like a Florida State team. Substitutions for Florida State. Into the game, number two, Jenna Nunes. Jumped about the depth for Florida State. Well, you're getting a good look at it right here. Jenna Nyswanger and Yuji Zhao coming into the match, replacing Robbins and Nesbeth. And these two players, Jenna Nyswanger is one who Mark Krikorian said might be the unsung hero, does not yeah. get enough respect for what she's done for the team this season. And Yuji Zhao, second team All-American, despite starting just six matches all year. <laughs> I know, that's the crazy thing when you think about their depth. Yeah, right away when you ask Krikorian, who's the least recognized player who doesn't get enough credit, and he was like, Jenna Nyswanger. Yeah. And then proceeded to tell us all the great things she's done. Could be a chance in transition here for Rutgers, but great recovery by Carl as Sam Kroger looked like she might have had a path up the middle. 
Still coming. The shot is taken, but wide by Fouchal. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Buick, the official SUV of the NCAA. And there is that break that Rutgers almost, thanks to Gab Gabby Carl's great defensive efforts, didn't wasn't able to pull off. But that is the break that is going to be on at times. Well, we now have a special guest joining us, Jerry Smith, head coach of Santa Clara. Hello, Jerry. How are you? And how is the team feeling as you get ready for your semifinal a little later tonight? Yeah, team's excited for sure. It's a rare opportunity to play in the College Cup on your home field, so they're pretty excited about it for sure. Rare opportunity, especially given you guys, Jerry, and, and your, your run the last two seasons, as we've talked about, to get to this College Cup. All those games on the road, how nice to be playing in front of a packed home stadium. Yeah, yeah, I don't think most people realize, you know, this is, we won nine NCAA playoff games in a row, but eight, eight of them were in the Eastern time zone. <laughs> and only one of them was at home against Stanford. And so to have a home game here uh, in the NCAA tournament is, uh, is a welcome uh, change from what we've been through for sure. And uh, it's gonna be a great atmosphere. BYU is a great team. It's gonna be a great full house tonight for sure. Uh, but we're, we're ready and we're excited. Yeah, give us just a real quick preview because a very familiar foe for you there with BYU in that matchup. Yeah, real familiar. They know us well. We know them well. Um, you know, the West Coast Conference is a very tough conference, and we face each other. We face each other three times this calendar year, and uh, we come out on top twice, and they beat us once. Um, it's always a battle. We're co-champs of the West Coast Conference, and uh, you know they're just high-powered offense. They're the number one scoring offense in the country, and it's not close. Nobody's close to them. They're averaging almost four goals a game, and they're just killing it. And uh, it's almost no way to shut them down completely. Um, but, you know, we'll do our best. We'll try to keep the ball. And it's kind of a little bit of different styles. We're going to try to keep the ball a little bit, maybe go east and west a little bit. They're a little bit more north and south than we are. Um, very, very uh, fast, very athletic, a very direct, very powerful team. And so a uh, little bit contrasting styles, but we know each other well, and it'll be a tight game for sure. I knew you'd do a great job with that preview. Thank you so much. Yeah, we'll let you go exactly. get ready. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good call. I was thinking the same thing. Thanks, Jerry. All right. You covered I was like, it. just cut that, and we'll use that for the next game <laughs> in our pregame. That should be a wonderful matchup. And, and, of course, he's very complimentary of his opponent, BYU. But his team also, he said they're hard to shut down. Well, his team did just that. Right. The one time they met in this season, a one nothing win for Santa Clara in that matchup. They did play two times in the spring, which was, of course, the 2020-21 season. Now we return our focus to this first semifinal, Florida State and Rutgers, first ever meeting occurring here at the College Cup. It's been tight so far. Let's see if some of these changes made off the bench could potentially make a difference. Gigi Zhao, Jenna Nicewanger coming in to the attack for Florida State. Pavlesko could not get around Tiernan. Now Amira Ali, for so long, has been one of the main faces of this Rutgers program. Started her career there, 2017, moves like this. Help tell you why. Tiernan got to it, got it off of Lauren Flynn and earns the first corner of the match for Rutgers. And that's the thing with Amir Ali that she's brought to this program and to her career is she can not only get in behind, she can hold, she can wait, she can buy some time. Tiernan, she finds on that left side And what a career when you look at those numbers that she has had. So Florida State earned three corner kicks early on the other end. Now we'll see what Rutgers is able to produce. Becky Fusha, the sophomore out of Pittstown, New Jersey, to take it. Roque and a lot of traffic. A little too much in the eyes of the referee.
A lot of bodies again in there. Real cake fighting through that traffic. Hard to see from that angle. I don't see much on that one there myself. Yeah. I did see Howell go down in front of her. She's always going to charge hard for the ball. Both ends of the field, whether she's helping to defend her goal or try to score one, got her head onto the ball for a good chance off the corner earlier in the match. of the part of dictating how the ball moves through the midfield for Florida State, two-time ACC midfielder of the year. Brown, good sound touch for Nice Wanger. It doesn't get far. Grocious won it for Rutgers. Christina Lynch, number 12. Christina Lynch. Heather Payne, number 18. Maria. And Maria Algoa. All coming into the match. Number 7. Ron Iwai, number 10. Joey Brown, and number 30. This is amongst the most substitutions we've seen from Florida State in the first half. Really, throughout the season, they do have a great bench, but this shows you how much confidence Mark Corey has and maybe wanted to try to change the look of things a little bit for the Seminoles. So, Allison Lowry also came on, has been a great spark off the bench for Rutgers. Six goals, four assists on the season, and Ali still fighting her way forward. Play on, says the referee. Here's Payne. Irish international who was just away has been called away a couple of times to join her Irish national team and when you have nine countries represented on your team that's going to You're happen missing Mark quite a few all is the used time. to it yep. yep turnover opportunity for Talia Ferry has been relatively quiet in the score for the Scarlet Knights Trying to set up Lowry, who just came into the match. Sophomore at Bridgewater, New Jersey. She replaced Tiernan. Across it comes. Tiernan's still out there. It was actually Kroger who came off for Rutgers in that substitution. Doesn't take long to realize the Big Ten freshman of the year is still out there for Rutgers. Tremendous season. Eight goals, 13 assists, and half of her goals coming in the NCAA tournament. Earned another corner for her team. Bouchelle will try it again from the corner. Okay, got a punch. About 15 minutes remaining in our first half, scoreless. Between these two teams, who both already have a championship, Big Ten regular season title for Rutgers, their first for any sports program in school history. And then Florida State, the ACC tournament champs. There's the handball right there. Rutgers doing a really good job of every time that Florida State is trying to build, either through flu show or they're having Mason step in from that center back position. There's always someone there to clog that counter and disrupt it. And so that midfield battle becomes one. Grocious is in there that they're winning right now. Really hard for Florida State to get any rhythm. Oh, 
Mason Lynch defending there for Rutgers. Lynch, Mason, Provenzano, Meisel across that back line for the Scarlet Knights. Madrill, former attacking player. She was quick to remind me. I asked her about how often she gets forward for Florida State. Here's Payne out for Florida State corner. Madrill's like, I'm just gonna do it myself. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, we've seen her do it before. Yeah, and she can do it herself. That's Taking the thing. Had 107 two. goals nice in her high longer. school career, by the way. 70 assists <laughs> in Navarre, Florida. And a very crowded box in front of that goal. Toward the back post, McClellan really had to stretch to get her hands to it. Carl back into the box. Howell looking for it. Nice swunger. McClellan finally says, let's take a breath and get it out of here. Well done by McClellan. She was reading that the whole way. Nice swungers either got to pull that back or put a little bit more pace on it so that McClellan doesn't want to come for that. Just floating in. It's an easy catch for her. Senior goalkeeper out of Kearney, New Jersey. And making her way up those record books. 40 shutouts in her career. That ranks third. Casey Murphy, player who just earned her first cap with the U.S. national team, getting a couple of starts against Australia. His first in Rutgers yes. history. How about those performances as well? My goodness. On to the pitch, number eight, Kylie Daigle. She replaces number 17, Amira Ali. Making way for Kylie Daigle, freshman out of Millville, New Jersey. Ali had a few electric moments, helping to generate some attack in this first half. Coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Women's College Cup final Sunday, December 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Now, one note for you to be aware of. BYU is in this College Cup playing later tonight. If they get past Santa Clara and get to that final, it will be moved to Monday. Same time, same network. 8 p.m. Eastern ESPNU if BYU is in the final. Yuji Zhao. Just stopped in her tracks. Lowry. Trying to get it forward. A chance for Talia Faye. Taken away by the defense of Madrill. What a great defensive play that is, but it starts all the way back here, winning that battle, driving forward, a good ball in to Talia Ferry. That first touch just takes her a little bit wide and gives, gives Madrill a chance to catch her. Had she maybe been able to catch her, cut it in with that first touch, she might have been able to get in front of her, but what a good defensive effort by Madrill there. Different look from the corner this time for Rutgers. Tiernan looked like a couple of players thought someone else was going to maybe try to get it. It sneaks between both of them in scarlet jerseys. Maria Alagoa, one of those subs who came on for Florida State, one of the ACC All Freshman team, freshman out of Portugal. And that's a player that has been fun to watch so technically. Yeah, Mark Krikorian was just effusive about her, her ability as a soccer player, pure soccer player. And, and if you know Mark Krikorian, he is not easily <laughs> effusive. You really have to earn it, but he certainly yes. was. Five goals on the season for Alagoa, some of them of the highlight reel variety including a golden goal in the ACC tournament semifinals against Wake Forest that helped the Seminoles get back to the championship game and win it for the second year in a row. That 
Busco and Payne working together on this near side. Payne, the cross, the header flicked back. Payne creating some danger on that right side. She's been active. Alagoa trying to make that near post run. Gets something on it, gets in front of her defender, but just doesn't get it on frame. Well, I think it's a good time maybe to remind you all about Caesar's Caesar season six <laughs> of Laughter <laughs> Permitted, one of my Aww. favorite podcasts with the one and only Julie Foudy. It's available wherever you get your podcasts. And this latest episode, what a special one that was with Holocaust survivor, psychologist, best-selling author, Dr. Edith Eager. She's just four years old That's as amazing. well. I know. And we, you know, they're like, wait, what? Holocaust survivor? What are you doing interviewing her on your podcast? Yeah. We interviewed trailblazing women. Not just sportswomen, and she is that. Boy, lived a life, that one. And it was amazing to talk to her. It was really like an honor of a lifetime. I was like, I feel so blessed to get this interview, so. She's amazing. Pavlisko got around Tieran, who's been doing a lot of defensive work for Rutgers. Kane, Provenzano leading the way to shut that down. Jow. Not the connection she was looking for. Talked about offense at the beginning. Both of these teams ranking in the top five in the country in terms of goals scored on the season. But you, you kind of had a feeling you knew both of them would also be pretty tough to break down. Yeah, and I think if you're Rutgers, you come out of this thinking, okay, we had a half to get our feet wet. I mean, they haven't had nearly the College Cup experience that a Florida State team has had. And so you come in, obviously, with that nerves and even just the mentality of, oh, God, we're going against Florida State, number one team in the country. Everyone knows how good they are. And you gain confidence by this half. And they've had their looks. If you're Rutgers, you're thinking, okay, look, we could get on this team. We've had their look. They've been a disruptive. Let's go. A nice Wonger. Florida State, their last two games to get here to this college cup, both just one nothing victories, including that one nothing win in overtime against Michigan in the quarterfinal. They've been tight, and I think you sometimes forget that with how often they've been on this big stage winning the two national championships 2014 2018 this is their eighth college cup appearance in the last 11 years which is an incredible run. incredible nice wonger what a touch how go up now pain but they've certainly been challenged to get back here it's not been an easy road by any means how go up just enough of a foot to disrupt where Rutgers was trying to go Scarlet Knights. Such tremendous experience and success for Florida State in the NCAA tournament. Trying to add to that here in Santa Clara. And I think Flusho and, and Brochus, they're both playing in front of those two center backs. They're the holding mids. Often Brochus plays higher have been really good for Rutgers because right now they just can't find. Usually Florida State likes to play through those double tens. They like to find Robbins when she was in there and Nesbitt when she was in there. And having a hard time getting any connection to that attacking midfield space. Oh, 
all the teams when we talked to them yesterday certainly skilled in many areas, be it the offense, defense, but also in the ability to recap this and to adjust. So we'll see what changes perhaps Florida State particularly makes because Rutgers' game plan so far has been a really good one against the Seminoles as Gianna Romano comes into the match, replacing Talia Ferry. Turnover, Tiernan, and she makes something of it. There's a space that it bounces off the outside of the leg of Brocious. Not a good clearance, kind of a shank from Roquet, and fortunate to get the ball back. And this is just miss, a miss hit that fortunately for Florida State didn't get punished by that. It's just a little off, everything. You're seeing it. It's not the typical Florida State team that we've been accustomed to seeing that can control games and give Rutgers credit for how they're set up. Do you feel like, I know you mentioned a couple of shots, or even at three Rutgers. shots apiece for the two teams, that in this game plan that Rutgers has put out so far, are they getting enough looks with all of their weapons offensively? I think that they understand that they're gonna have to pick their moments, and I think they are picking them, but I think a lot of that too just comes from settling into a game. Second half, especially you go in at halftime and say, as I was saying, hey, look, we're with this team. I mean, that's gonna be the discussion. We're fine, and now let's play. And, and you come in with a new swagger and a little bit more confidence if you're Rutgers, and I think that's half the battle for a lot of these teams that haven't been to College Cup, is the mentality to come out and play. Didn't seem like there'd be any doubt talking to them yesterday, but still you do wonder because it is a different feeling. Lowry trying to generate something here in the last couple of minutes of the first half. Tiernan, nowhere to turn, but does find an escape. No foul called as Dago goes bouncing to the ground. Madrill. Nice one, checking her options. And now that Rutgers defense given time to recover and get all their numbers back. Seminoles, their three shots all came in the first five and a half minutes of this first half. One minute, one minute remaining in the first half. Rutgers team said on July 14th, they knew the date that this was their goal to be on this stage. They felt they had the skill to do it. They've proved their point. Come in here, number one seed, and rank number five in the most recent rankings. Florida State number one. It has felt like a top five battle so far. Madrill. Is there a chance to be had in transition? Zhao will take one two, shot one. as the countdown is on in the first the half. The first half. Just register the another score. save there for McClellan. So 0-0 zero, zero in our first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at our next semifinal, Santa Clara BYU and all WCC affair. Plus, tell you about our V Week call to action and look back at our first half. We're awaiting the arrival of Rutgers head coach Mike O'Neill, Big Ten Coach of the Year, with this team that was perfect in the Big Ten regular season, winning that regular season title. Have fought their way all the way through to this College Cup, second in program history, first since 2015. And Coach O'Neill joining us now. Mike, give us your thoughts on this first half and what you tried to do to maybe frustrate Florida State and keep them out of a rhythm. Yeah, I, I think that's the, that's the key. We wanted to frustrate them a little bit, right? And we wanted to make sure that 
you know, we recognize the different times that you know, we stay organized and then recognize the times that we can get them in the trapping areas and step. And then the other side of it would be is when we get it, we want to, you know, get our eyes up, a bit more courage and keep the ball. What, what are some of the things you want to see out of this second half, coach? Yeah, just a, just a mentality that, you know, when we, when we have it, we want to continue to make things happen. So sometimes when we're defending a bit, we're, when we have it, we're not getting in the transition shape quicker, which will provide us a, a few more options in the attack. Mike, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Scoreless first half in our first of two semifinals from Santa Clara, California in the 2021 NCAA Women's College Cup. Coming up, we will take a look at our next semifinal between Santa Clara and BYU. State scoreless after the first 45 minutes. A couple of final words there from Mark Krikorian to his group before they get going. In this second half, so much experience for Mark Krikorian. And we're going to take you way back in this one. How about those back-to-back -back oh, national championships? Franklin Pierce in the 90s. And then what he has done at Florida State has been phenomenal. Getting to the College Cup, winning it two times, 2014 and 2018. And yeah, he is a regular here in this Final Four of NCAA Women's Soccer. Trying to pick up that third NCAA championship, get back to that championship game but has to try to find a way past this scrappy Rutgers Scarlet Knights team to do so. We are now joined by Mark Krikorian. Mark, give us your thoughts on that first half and what you saw in terms of the way Rutgers was, was trying to defend you in particular. Yeah, I thought they were very effective. They um, uh, put a 4-2-4 four four out there and tried to <coughs> clog up a lot of the space and the central space as well. And I thought we were a little careless with the ball. And uh, they were pretty good on the counter, so it, uh, it almost hurt us. We started off okay and ended okay, but there was a period during the middle, I didn't think we were sharp enough. What do you make in terms of changes for second half, Coach? Yeah, we're not making any big change. I think we talked about being a little sharper. We need to adjust our spacing a little bit and uh, play a little bit quicker. Okay, thanks very much for your Thank time, you. Mark. Appreciate Thanks. it. Well, so you, you called that? Julie Fowdy with the way that Rutgers looked. Yeah, it was interesting. It was smart, too, because it did force them to play differently and disrupt. And that is half the battle tactically against a team as experienced and as good as this Florida State team. And now, if you're Rutgers, you know it worked. You know they're going to be sharper in the second half in terms of Florida State and the way they approach this. And they're going to have to bring more, but they also know they're in it. And I really like what Mike O'Neill told us going into break after the end of the first half about his team. I think he'd probably give them an A-plus on their defensive effort, but maybe wanting just a little bit more about flexing that offensive muscle when they get the chance and they get the ball. Claire Robbins quickly forward for Florida State. Will they do a better job of finding where those new pockets of space are based on the way that the Scarlet Knights are arranging themselves. Lauren Flynn, a little slow to get up there after that collision with Amira Ali. Four-time All-American in the attack for Rutgers. Scarlet Knights moving the ball up the field. Ali just one of the weapons in that attack for Rutgers this season. Riley Tiernan, the freshman, has been tremendous. Frankie Talia Ferry, who's from New Jersey, transferred in from Penn State after an All-American career there with the Nittany Lions. Now adding as well. Gabby Carl trying to say, look, she just fell over there. But this is the ideal position for Rutgers wanting to get some set pieces around their box. Sam Prover, sophomore out of West Milford, New Jersey, will take the free kick. Still alive, Tiernan. Can't turn. committed a foul after the fact. Samantha Martinez, our referee, this all-female officiating crew. 
for this first College Cup semifinal. Taking the same defensive tact you see for Rutgers in that wide shot four. There's three you can see, four, two, four, as Mark Kikorian was talking about that. It's what they did in the first half to much success. Talia Ferry popping higher to create that fourth defender on that front line. And forcing Florida State to play a bit of a more direct ball just like that, which Rutgers did win back. Now Ali chasing, wins it off of call. Smooth on the step over. Not so smooth, little slip, and there's some fog and moisture in the air here in Santa Clara this evening. Ball falls right to Becky Fouchel. First five minutes of the first half really belonged to Florida State. That's when they got three of their four shots. Tierna knew where she wanted to put it, but didn't have a teammate on the same page. Jody Brown. Emily Mason, a freshman who's been so good, helping to start this attack now for Ali! Saved by Roque! Best chance of the game so far for the Scarlet Knights who have Started this second half on the front foot. Oh, what a save that is. I thought that was in the back of the net. Amir Ali having a busy second half right away. On the ball a ton. Looking hungry up there in this Rutgers attack, making the 100th start of her career. Has been in Piscataway since 2017 after she was a national player of the year in high school, Ali, and has just continued, had a historic career, first three-time All-American in program history, now make it four-time. Ivani Nesbeth had a good shot for Florida State, one of their four in the first half. And here is a look at it. Amir Ali getting that freedom to get in, beats the players, muscles them off, but look at Roque just getting down at the last minute. Oh, that's such a good save. It looked like it was against her momentum as well, going the other way. And the drill sliding across too, trying to help defensively. Ron Ewai making just her second start of the season this evening for Florida State. Jalen Howell, reigning Herman Trophy winner, has appeared with the senior U.S. national team. That one will not challenge the senior goalkeeper, Megan McClellan, much. Talked about the career for Amira Ali. You see who's number one in career goals. That name, Carly Lloyd, has been around quite a bit. As <laughs> she heard of her. Yeah, a couple times, right? Just announced her retirement. Maybe she's watching this from some beach, beach hut, tropical vacation spot somewhere she well deserves after a tremendous career for professionally with the U.S. national team. Well deserved break. Still found some time, of course, to give a shout out to this Rutgers team and the season that they've been having. There have been a lot of former players and alumni that have come through this program who have reached out to this current team just to let them know they're behind them, how much they believe in this group. We've already made some history coming in here as a number one seed for the first time ever, winning the Big Ten regular season title for the first time ever and doing it in perfect fashion, by the way, 10 and 0. Allison Lynch. 
Jr. for the Scarlet Knights. Carl in a tight space did find an escape route. A little bit of frustration actually in the body language of the Seminoles, something you don't often see this team usually so smooth and composed. Beata Olsen, leading scorer for the Seminoles on the season, had the game-winning goal in the quarterfinals that put Florida State back in the College Cup. Here's Robbins. Draws in three defenders. Nesbitt goes back for Madrill. Eli Carl just waiting for it. The drill. Can't have things on the far side of the field. No chance for Rutgers to move it the other direction. Riley Tiernan, Big Ten Freshman of the Year, Big Ten first team selection. What a season Tiernan's had. Four goals just in this NCAA tournament. It's been so fun to watch. And told us, you know, this stage doesn't feel too big. She likes an audience, and that includes when the team breaks out their speaker that they traveled with all the way out here to Santa Clara so they could make sure they got their karaoke time in. Do you remember what Riley said her, her go-to song was? Oh, yeah, Ice Ice, baby. That's right. Ice Ice. Stop, collaborate, and listen. <laughs> she knows all the words. So do I, but so I'll stop right there <laughs> for everyone's benefit. Let's go. <laughs> Come on, Hildred. <laughs> Give it to me. Hey, you know, maybe if she gets a goal to save that, huh? <laughs> Something to look forward to. Here. Jody Brown has been really good for Florida State in this NCAA tournament, but loses it here. Emma Meisel, the sophomore, taking it away. This will go in favor of Rutgers. Nesbeth just making sure that Herman semifinalist Frankie Talia Ferry has to slow things down a little. The MLS postseason rolls on Sunday afternoon. NYCFC is in their first ever Eastern Conference Final. They play the second seeded Philadelphia Union at Subaru Park, a spot in the MLS Cup is on the line. That's three Eastern Noon Pacific on ABC, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. So has Florida State figured out a way to play their game a little more and beat this shape that Rutgers has come at them with. Not yet. No? No. Not yet. They've clogged the spaces and I think still they need to, to pick up the pace of their possession as well if you're Florida State. Well, Michael's really covered a lot of ground. It's one of the few players on this Rutgers team who when I tell you her hometown, it doesn't end in New Jersey. She's from Mechanicsburg. Pennsylvania. A lot of pride in this team in being Jersey girls and in representing their home state. Florida State into the box. Push back out. EY. Couple of touches for Nesbeth who took a look over her shoulder that allowed Rutgers to get in there. Lynch just slipped a little bit. And now everyone waiting for the whistle. It does eventually come. It'll be Rutgers ball. It is wet indeed. That fog is starting to roll. It's just going to get slippier.
Lawrence Flynn. Flynn, another one of those players we talked about early. There are four in this match who've been called into U-20 camp for the U.S. It's coming up really right after this College Cup out in California. Everything is just too static for Florida State. Not a lot of movement. No one's dropping in, giving a little angle, giving a different option. It's as static as I've seen him. Brown had a goal in the first three NCAA tournament matches for the Seminoles. Olsen, the game winner in the quarterfinal. Yeah, just because you're being given time doesn't mean you should take your time if you're Florida State. It's playing a bit into what Rutgers wants when they've got the ball in that part of the field anyway. Good touch from EY. Carl, you typically see Gabby Carl get forward quite a bit. Well, that's, the, that's the interesting thing with the four that they're pushing higher, the 4-2-4, four, four, is it, it makes those outside backs stay a little bit more with those four. And so you're not seeing Gabby Carl on the left side and Pavlisco on the right getting forward as much. There's Brown. Might as well doing the defending and does it well. Goal kick. The NCAA Women's College Cup is presented by Buick, the official SUV of the NCAA. So we saw these two substitutions come on rather early in the first half. The difference in the second half is you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer. So we could see those players, Nesbeth and Robbins, come back in. But right now, nice Wonger and Zhao into the match for Florida State. ball over the top a little bit of a different tact but maybe one that is required of Florida State at least to shake things up a little at times Seminoles trying to make their way back to the NCAA championship game for the sixth time in program history for Rutgers Looking for their first appearance in the final. This is their second College Cup. Did not make that final match in 2015. And you might have just seen that pop up. A reminder that the final, the championship match, scheduled for Sunday on ESPNU. However, if BYU beats Santa Clara in our second semifinal. BYU does not play on Sunday. The NCAA respecting that and will move the championship match to Monday on ESPNU. I think that game's gonna have a little bit different tempo than this game. <laughs> BYU likes a little high octane. <laughs> that they do. Let's go. They press, they run. Number one offense in the country. Getting ready to come your way. And looking for a little revenge against the Santa Clara team. That beat them in the regular season. Florida State would certainly like their shot at revenge. Wound up losing in the penalty kick shootout to Santa Clara in the 2020 NCAA championship game, which we could say last year, but really it was just last spring. It's certainly been a, a calendar year like no other for these teams in terms of their turnaround and the seasons and the way that they played out with those split seasons, spring and fall in 2020 due to the pandemic. Madrill 
off half, right up the middle, took it. A lot of space for Zhao, All-American for the Seminoles. Here's with the Chinese national team. And we were talking about BYU, now joined by their head coach, Jennifer Rockwood. First of all, congratulations getting here for the first time. Maybe give us a little taste of how your team is feeling as they get ready for this match. Um, I think just really excited, excited to be a part of it and uh, taking it all in and uh, ready to go. Did you bring a karaoke machine like Rutgers though, coach, is what <laughs> I want to know. Uh, the girls like to dance, not karaoke, but they got, their, they got their tunes going in the bus and in the locker room for sure. <laughs> What, what are you hoping to see tonight? And I know this is a very familiar foe in Santa Clara, mm -hmm. uh, but what do you want to see from your team tonight? Uh, we want to see the girls get off to a real strong start. We like to go at people nice and early, nice and quick, try and get behind their back line. A um, lot of pressure and uh, just real high energy. Well, and I think if you wouldn't mind sharing the story that really Santa Clara is a kind of a team that helped propel your team, right? In terms of what they did last year. Yeah, absolutely. After uh, Santa Clara won the national championship, a lot of the girls, I think just realized that maybe it was a little bit more realistic than they thought. I mean, obviously we play Santa Clara in the conference and proud to represent the WCC, but with them winning it, maybe the girl, your girls thought, you know, why can't we do the same thing? And so that's kind of driven them over the course of the last several months, getting prepared and, and made it back to the spot. Well, congratulations on getting here. We look forward to seeing your team later tonight. All right, thanks guys. First ever appearance in the College mm. Cup for BYU, and what a fun team yeah. they are to watch. I'm uh, so thrilled for her, too. 27 years. That she's had such a great run at BYU. Gotten so close so many times. First College Cup and now yeah, over 400 wins and a tremendous career for Jennifer Rockwood, who started that BYU program. And now taking this next step, which she had told us maybe she thought she wasn't going to take, and she right. kind of resigned herself to, well, I've had a great career. Maybe I don't need that. When you let go of that pressure that you put on yourself, sometimes good things happen, right? So true. And that was so interesting when the players said that. I said, what's the biggest difference to getting over the hump this year? And they said, the fact that Santa Clara won made us think, well, if they can win it, we can win it. <laughs> And it was a shift in mindset right from day one. Talia Ferry coming off. Allison Lowry coming into the match for Rutgers. We haven't quite seen the best of Talia Ferry yet in terms of what she can do in this attack for the Scarlet Knights. Imagine we will see her back before this one is over. kind of throw all or at least some of the stats out the window once you get into this college cup because these teams just so good so seasoned on both sides of the ball not surprising really to see a lot of low scoring games as we have in the past and Florida State's comfortable in those a team that does not get rattled easily Going to take a little bit of an individual flash of brilliance from Florida State, I think, to break down a very organized Rutgers defense. You heard Mike O'Neill say he wanted a little more courage offensively. I think that's what you're going to need to see from a couple of these Florida State players, and they definitely have the talent to do that. And they're shuffling the deck a little bit here, bringing some players off the bench, giving them a different look maybe than the players that started the match. So that's Maria Alagoa, freshman out of Portugal, Heather Payne, a junior out of Ireland, and Christine a Lynch, a senior out of Granger, Indiana, just into the match for Florida State. talked early on about just what a great mix it is with these four teams here BYU first time ever in the College Cup for Rutgers getting that first ever number one seed trying to make the most of it we have the defending national champs and in fact the 
team that was runner up, Florida State, who's maybe taken over that role that North Carolina had yeah. for so long as the dominant team in women's soccer. How often they've continued to get back here to this biggest stage. How strange was that to see UNC go out first round? Yeah, and also not make the ACC tournament this year. That first time ever that the Tar Heels did not make the ACC tournament. First time ever knocked out in the first round. Yeah, and that just tells you though that I give such tremendous credit to Anson Dorrance and his staff because to have that consistency year over year because soccer can be a brutal funny game as we all know you can play great soccer and lose yet they have had the consistency to never have lost in that first round which yeah. to me is remarkable it's taken this long pain a nice wonger Malagoa has a little bit of space oh just a bit behind Lynch Drill drives it forward. Payne, nice longer. Zhao. That was the setup Florida State wanted, just not the finish. Such a beautiful sequence. Starts with the ball over the top to Payne. Good touch. Gets it under control, finds a gap. Nice longer gets to it, finds Zhao in the gap on that seam. Pretty placement as well. Perfectly paced. Zhao just gets under it, knows right away. You could see the look on her face when she missed that. That was a golden opportunity for Florida State. Yuji Zhao, five goals, nine assists on the season. Payne, who's had limited time to be with the Seminoles, making the most of it here. Again, to Nicewanger, her left-footed shot took a deflection, went out. But you kind of sense something building here in terms of some good looks for Florida State. A little more momentum for Florida State. Nicewanger finding these gaps in these seams, which she can do so well, bringing a lift immediately coming off that bench. And that's the gap in the scene they haven't been able to find. That's there. First corner kick of the second half for either team. First time we get a chance to see Yuji Zhao take it for Florida State in this match. Way back. Tried to get it headed back in. But Florida State will settle for a corner on the other side. Zhao had an assist off a corner kick to Lynch in the ACC tournament semifinals for a goal. Now Nice Warner who has a couple of assists off corners. Bends it right into the box. And it's in! Florida State scores the first goal. It's Jalen Howell. set pieces Jalen Howell is she just picks it up off the hip there for the second ball knows in the traffic it's going to be put somewhere and Rutgers unable to clear it on that first ball out if you cannot clear this ball then this is what happens just can't get ahead on it and when there's a ball dangling around you're going to put your money on Jalen Howell to finish it in the box always there hungry searching for that second one just the third goal of the season for Jalen Howell, but what a big one it was. Coming off the set piece after Florida State probably had the best stretch of being threatening offensively that we've seen in this match other than maybe the opening five minutes. And this will be interesting to see how Rutgers reacts. Do they try and give a little more offensive presence? And to use Mike O'Neill's word, a little bit more courage offensively or are they going to sit back still 
Mm -hmm. Little oohs and ahs from the crowd as Roque quietly just reaches up and takes it out of the air. Mike O'Neill's team looking for a quick answer if they can get one. Now Florida State has been proficient in the second half all season long. Over 60% of their goals have come after halftime. And that's their 16th that started off of a set piece. The problem is when you're a team that goes down against Florida State, they just don't concede much. As we've seen just in the NCAA tournament, the only goal they have conceded this NCAA tournament came in the form of a penalty kick. Yeah, that's a great point, that not conceding a goal to run a play in this NCAA tournament. So Rutgers is gonna have to try to find a way to break through that defense that's been so good. Well, in the last match for Rutgers, that quarterfinal against Arkansas, one of the best teams out of the SEC, it wound up 2-2 in regulation, wound up going through double overtime to the shootout. They had to come back in that one. So they've done it before, but Florida State continue to attack, looking for another stop at the near post. Nice Wonger. Perhaps a foul there, Florida State fans may be looking for it, but good defensive play as it stands. Does this Rutgers offense have an answer? Right on the edge of the box. Howell, the goal scorer, clears it, but not far enough. Cruchel loses it, and Zhao picks it up for the Seminoles. What's been better for Julie for Florida State? What's been better in the second half? Yeah, just Jenna nice longer. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> She's come in and given them a bounce in that seam that they couldn't get in before. Been active, been busy, played that ball into to Zhao. Now we go up. Now Zhao. Alagoa's shot is saved. And, and the pace has picked up a little bit. Here is that look earlier. Alagoa's been busy as she's come in in the second half. Under 15 minutes to play in the first of two semifinals from Santa Clara, California. We are on the home field of the defending national champs, Santa Clara Broncos. They're coming up next. The crowd continuing to pack in here. It was a sellout. So expect all those seats to be filled for our second semifinal. Either the Seminoles or the Scarlet Knights trying to make their way to the championship match. And BYU, Santa Clara, coming up next. BYU, get a little color change here. We've got a lot of shades of red, but the Cougars standing out in that bright blue in their first ever College Cup. That has them stand out as well. Tremendous story of what that team has done and the way that they've done it with the nation's best offense. Talia Perry. And this is the decision that Rutgers has to make as the clock continues to tick. 
13 minutes it's showing left left just over so when do you start this press talia ferry is going to trigger that she's the one mike o'neill said who decides when they go when they don't but at some point you got to start going perhaps now the time lowry continuing to get onto the ball now in the box with a shot it's a shame follow-up by Taya Ferry saved again and Roquet saving the day for Florida State three huge saves in this second half the first one on Amir Ali earlier in the half and those two right there game saving saves because Lowry's in and Taya Ferry as she does so well following And she sees it's right behind her, rolls over, grabs it. Just a sophomore, Christina Roque. And I think one of the things that stands out when you look at her numbers throughout the season, just 23 saves, really a minuscule amount for an entire season of soccer. But when she has had to make the big save, she's proven she can do it. There's trouble, Ali Wagner's in the house. <laughs> She's got her kids, all the kids. Look out, Well, that whole Santa Clara crew is gonna be coming in. I mean, they came across the country last year, Julie, all the way to Cary, North Carolina. Oh, how many alums do we have out there? There's Ali. Yeah, there's our booth right behind her. She's yeah. trying to distract us, but it's not working. Yeah, but those cute kids are distracting me. <laughs> Laser focus hey, up here. Her kids, come on. Can they be any more adorable? Well, the 27th annual Jimmy V Classic coming your way from Madison Square Garden Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app. Texas Tech taking on number 13 Tennessee. And then at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Old rivals squaring off in a familiar building, number six Villanova and Syracuse, led by Buddy Beheim. To donate to the Jimmy V Foundation, go to v.org. Jalen Howell goal in the 71st minute has Florida State out in front. And just over 10 minutes away from a return to the national championship game. There are not many teams better than Florida State at killing a game. <laughs> it is a tall order to get the ball off of them once they go up a goal. I think it was Wake Forest coach Tony Deleuze who referred to it as dying a slow death if you let Florida State have their way and control the ball. And he said, I don't want to die a slow death. You've got to find a way to break up their rhythm. Rutgers have done a very good job of that. But Florida State breaking through. It came off a corner kick. No assist given on the goal. And there were a couple touches after the initial corner, but make no mistake, Jenna Nyswanger's corner, which eventually found Jalen Howell making the difference so far. I think he said it is a slow death by a thousand passes. Yeah. And that's what they can do. They can just keep the ball. Jalen Howell, two-time ACC midfielder of the year. And another corner here for Florida State as they continue to mount. This is their eighth of the match. Zhao's ball right in the mix. Provenzano, Big Ten defender of the year, one of the leaders on this Rutgers team trying to help her Scarlet Knights Get up the field, get into that attack that has been so lethal and so good this season. Substitutions for Rutgers, on to the pitch, number 17, Amira Ali, replacing number nine, Allison Lynch. Also
come onto the pitch, number three, Sam Kroger, replacing so number Sam eight, Kroger, Amira Ali, Ali, both coming back into the match for Rutgers. Final push is on right now. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to switch up the system even a little bit as well. This Rutgers team that set a goal at their captain's preseason meeting in July to be here in this College Cup and not only to get here, but to win it all. And it looks like they're going into a 3-4-3 three, three, perhaps to finish off these final eight minutes. And this is when I suspect you're going to see them start to go because whether you lose 2-0, 3-0, right? It's all the same. It counts as a loss in that category, so you got to start going. And it hasn't just been the goal. There have been some good adjustments that you've talked about, Julie, for Florida State and figuring out where the space was and how to exploit it against this Rutgers team. I just have a feeling though this Scarlet Knights team with all that firepower and Tiernan, a big part of that. Still with something left to say. Eight goals, 13 assists for Tiernan in her Big Ten Freshman of the Year campaign. Talia Ferry, who had her season end against Florida State last season when she was with Penn State, trying to avoid that fate this year with her hometown team of Rutgers. Tiernan, trapped in the corner. Somehow, the Scarlet Knights get it into Ali. And everybody back to help defensively for Florida State. Tiernan. Did get a deflection. They will get a corner kick. Can they make something happen with this chance? Kick, Santa Clara getting warmed up, getting ready. This is their home field. Should feel very comfortable. With the ball, number three, Seth Kroger. Kroger and Tiernan both over the ball for Rutgers. Kroger drives it near post. Out for another corner. And you can see Amira Ali just fighting Seth for Kroger position there Riley off of Pablisco. Scarlet Knights came back to answer their last match. Can they do it again? What a ball! Did it cross? It lands in the top of the net, but that ball hovered around in the air above the goal line for an excruciating number of seconds. Rokeng getting that first hand on it. She can't get the second hand on it. Oh my goodness. For Rutgers, third corner kick. Okay. did get such a big hand on the ball in that last attempt. This time it goes out and the Seminoles can take a bit of a breath. The coverage of the NCAA championships continues with the Women's College Cup final Sunday, December 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU. For more information on the NCAA Women's College Cup, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And set that same time and channel for Monday for the championship match should BYU advance and make it to the final would be moved to Monday. Under five minutes to play. In this first semifinal, Florida State in the lead and with the ball. Looking for more to put it away. Nice longer. Beat to the ball by McClellan. And again, nice Wonger almost getting on the end of this one. Getting herself in some dangerous positions. And this is what happens when the game opens up a little bit. You find you have more space. It's been the danger that Rutgers has not wanted to open up too soon. But with four minutes, you got to take that risk. Risk versus reward. And it's all risk as it comes down to those final minutes. Oh, 
Ali. Provenzano back to her goalkeeper McClelland. Is this the last time they take the field together for Rutgers? Bouchel mm -hmm. up on the sideline. And what Florida State has done wisely is put the pace of Jody Brown on Amir Ali, and they're doubling up with Madrill on Ali. And it's man to man against Amir Ali with Jody Brown. You've seen the pace of Jody Brown up front. We often don't see her on that back line, but she is at her hip. Tiernan gets away in the box, a chance for Rutgers. Perhaps a follow up over the crossbar. Was that the moment, or was it just a little momentum being built here? Gabby Carl getting a little casual, and Rutgers almost taking advantage of it. Kroger can't get over that one. Three minutes left to play as the stakes raise ever higher in this semifinal match. A spot in the championship on the line. Florida State trying to get back to that championship game. Or they lost in penalty kicks last year to the team. Coming up next, the Santa Clara Broncos will take on a first-timer at the College Cup, BYU. Oh. Talia Ferry, Big Ten Midfielder of the Year. And Kroger working together. Out wide. Lowry's been really active off the bench for Rutgers. Ali does have the height advantage over Brown, but the ball, not where she could get her head on it. Goalkeeper for the state. Well, here's our player of the game brought to you by Buick. Yeah, we're going goalkeeper. Christina Roque has earned it. And that first save against Amira Ali, incredible. There you see two more she picks up. Rose over gets that, and then on the corner kick, she comes out for it as well. Gets that first hand on it, can't quite get to the second one. Her defenders do the rest. But that is a game for Roque. A Buick player of the game, well deserved by the sophomore goalkeeper. Has appeared for the Puerto Rican youth national teams. Oh, Santa Clara fans starting to get rowdy, anticipating the arrival of the Broncos here on their home field. And just over a minute after this one ends, and we'll be back about 30 minutes in between. It's been quite a run this season by Rutgers. Last two matches going to double overtime. Can they push it there again? In the box, an opportunity, maybe no. Ali, the first four-time All-American in Rutgers program history. Trying to help create an opportunity. It bounces down, and Roque has another. Julie, Florida State figured it out and took advantage of a great delivery on a corner kick from Nicewanger. That looks like that's gonna get them back. <laughs> yeah, it's not the prettiest game I've ever seen from Florida State, that's for sure. Uh, and I think they would say the same thing, but they got it done. And they may have to withstand another corner. They will, corner that did go Rutgers. out. So with 10 Nine, seconds eight, left and counting seven, down, final six, chance, goalkeeper McClellan coming up. This will be it, three, last chance for Rutgers, two, the header one, out of bounds and Florida zero. State returns to the national championship. That concludes match one of the women's college cup semifinal with the Florida State winning with one goal. And what a final 10 minutes from that Rutgers team. Fighting to get back in it. And had Roquet maybe not made that save earlier in the game, that is a different game.
wanted so much if you're Rutgers to be proud of the way they shaped up today, the way they made this game difficult for a very good Florida State team as well. And if you're Florida State, you say, okay, not our best, but hey, this is this is the game that we got through and had to get through. Sometimes it's ugly and sometimes you have to get it off set pieces like this. A bouncing ball didn't come from something necessarily as pretty as we've often seen from them, but they got it out and get the win. Jalen Howell, the game winner for Florida State in the 71st minute. So Florida State, the number one seed, ranked the number one team in the country, trying to finish number one. They know they're in that championship match. Will it be Santa Clara or BYU? That one coming up, you will not want to miss it. A WCC rematch between those two co-champions. Our final score, 1-0 Florida State. Coming up next, CFB 150, the greatest, presented by Xfinity, followed by our second national semifinal, Santa Clara, BYU, coming your way. Final score, Florida State 1-0, Seminoles moving on to the championship.